Hello everyone and welcome to What Culture Gaming. I'm Josh, joined as ever by Hella herself, Ashley Millman, because we have a delicious news roundup for you today. Loot boxes, sequels, and a potential crossover event of the century. But first, as ever, the loot box scandal is constantly in flux, and who else? But EA is in the limelight once again. They have been talking to the UK government, of all people, <laughs> about why loot boxes are good, actually, because obviously they have been taking a lot of heat, not just since Battlefront 2, uh, but earlier this year when a US senator was trying to push through an anti-loot box ban that specifically targeted FIFA Ultimate Team, which brings yeah. in like a billion dollars a year, and it's just <laughs> ridiculous. But they've essentially said that, you know what, loot boxes are good yes. in that they're just a nice little surprise. Oh yes, they're oh just yes. Actually, all right. What, Ash, what was the uh, the terminology that they used to describe them? What sort of little surprises are they like? Oh, they're they're, they're like they uh, were compared to Kinder eggs. Yeah, well, um, fair enough. A Kinder surprise eggs, egg, a lol surprise, and uh, Hatchimals. What is a lol surprise? I don't know. I'm what is a lol surprise? This. I really thought I'd come in here and you would tell me what a lol surprise is. <laughs> I have is. no idea. It sounds like a horrible, horrible thing to happen. Like, lol surprise. I don't know. It just sounds really, uh, it sounds just scary. Just like loot boxes then. Yeah, like a Kinder Egg. Oh, nice chocolatey little treat in the center. Hatchable. That sounds cute. It's... Like, that sounds like those dinosaurs that you like <laughs> crack open and then you don't know what dinosaur you're going to get and you have to like grow it from an egg. Like the alien eggs as like well. Like the alien eggs. Gooey alien None eggs. None of those things are good though. Like no, a Kinder Egg, good. you could you could swallow the toy and die. An alien egg jumps in your face and then then you yeah. just get a chest burster, so oh. I don't think this is a very good defense. They, they make babies, do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> <But> like, <laughs> no, no, they don't make babies. <laughs> you squished your gooey aliens together, they'd make babies. Urban myth dispelled. But anyway, the uh, lol surprise, I have no idea what the hell it is, and it sounds horrible like a loot box. It's just, that's my addition to this that's, segment. Well, this has somehow just been entirely about Kinder Egg stuff. Yeah. But it's frustrating to see here, just like, they never really say like why a thing is good. They just yeah. say what it's not. In this case, they reiterated that they agree with the bodies of governments who have said that loot boxes aren't gambling. Yeah. They've doubled down on that, and they've compared it to sort of like chocolates and sweets, mm. when it's, it's far more insidious than that. Mm. I don't like how they can just kind of like, keep pushing the issue away and yeah. just focusing on the legality of it like they call yeah. it um they say it was like yeah a nice surprise and that it was like like ethical and good and like it's moral not. It's but not. it's not and it definitely is gambling because you don't know what you're gonna get and you keep going until you get it yeah i well, swear i swear rich has actually spoken about his uh, his things with call of duty before where he's kept going on the pulley gummy machine being like because gambling, it is gambling it's only gambling like we've said many times before it's only technically not gambling <laughs> because you can't get the money that you put in out yeah. it's only spent on in-game items but yes. it's like using the exact same mentalities yeah. all the way and they compared it to sort of they said the official statement was we do think that the way we have implemented these kind of mechanics and fifa of course is our big one mm. our ultimate fifa team our fifa ultimate team and our packs is actually quite ethical and quite fun quite enjoyable to the people even when they're talking about it they have to use like the quite, quite yeah. it's like they're not saying it's even fun it's like oh they <laughs> quite like it people are quite enjoying it. It's just so frustrating to see them sort of continue to push back even though they know players yeah. like are, are outraged about it. Yeah, it keeps making loads of money and that's mm. obviously why they want to keep putting it in. But it's just like, they need a better defense than this. This is not a good spin. <laughs> it's good, it's fun, it's not gambling. Everybody loves it. We're not arguing with the government as to whether it's good or not. That's the thing, Ooh. it's like, oh my God, we have to talk to the UK government about this who yeah. are investigating gaming as an industry. <laughs> and I'm sure, you know, oh. I don't trust the UK government to bring about any good regulations mm. because I mean, Remember when they banned video nasties like 30 years ago? They no bad. reason at all. Actually it's bad. It's not really good. So so I, don't, on. I, don't agree, I don't think this is going to go anywhere, but at the same time, it's just, it further emphasizes just how like out of it they are with like the messaging and stuff. Yeah. And I don't like it. Anyway. So talking about God of War, um, let's talk about that instead. Sure, then. Really That's good segue into the next news. <laughs> segue. <laughs> Shut up about loot boxes, let's talk about God of War. Because... Santa Monica Studios Ooh. have, oh sorry I struck you like that, have been um, putting out their advertising for hiring the next people to do God of War 5. I did see this, <laughs> finally. Are they just like, they're not even kind of hiring it, they said that they are hiring yeah. people with knowledge of God of yeah. War. Wonder what that could be for. Oh I don't know. What project Ragnarok could this is be? coming, <laughs> Ragnarok is coming. But yes, God of War 5 is uh, on the way to being in production, which is the most great news of 2019 Absolutely. so far. Um, I made lots of different things about this because 
there was an important thing about the facial blend shape character artist. Interesting. The facial blend shape <laughs> character artist, which I have no idea what that is or what they do, <laughs> but the uh, the actual little segment for them says that it's going to be a next gen experience. Which so, makes a lot of sense. Like we yeah. we all but know that Sony is going to officially drop their console next uh, end of next year. Like mm. Microsoft have yeah. said, their Xbox Scarlet is coming in um, holiday 2020. So yeah. that would make a lot of sense. It's interesting that they're going straight into production and not doing mm. sort of an expansion because from the other PlayStation mm. exclusives that we've had this year, Uncharted, Horizon, and uh, even Spider-Man, mm. they've all released sort of like these extra DLC packs. Yeah, we haven't had mm. that from God of War, which is mm. disappointing, but if it means a full sequel comes sooner, yeah. I think I'm all right with as it. As I say, the whole thing about DLC is that it's kind of annoying. Like, you get, you want your whole game when you get your whole game, whereas I feel like that's what they're delivering with this. They're going to really tight production, like what they did with God of War, doing all these really wonderful things with it, and just give us the whole package. Like, God of War is their most fast-selling PS4 exclusive, I think, with over yeah. 10 million copies sold as of May 2019. That's crazy. Yeah, I know. It's actually so much. Um, but yeah, people absolutely love it. People are really invested in it, which means, yes, they could, you know, get a bit of DLC out of it, but everyone's going to be far more excited for Ragnarok than Definitely. they are, like, well, whatever I mean, else they're going to In my dream scenario, God of War 2, which would be a weird name, by the way, if you just call it God of War 2. I've just I thought of that. Yeah, I think it was God of War Ragnarok. God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. If that was a launch title for PlayStation 5, oh. which would be pushing it, oh. but... Like oh. Halo have, I mean, uh, Microsoft have oh. Microsoft have Halo Infinite, and they've got, and if Sony came out and we're like, yeah, yep, we got God of War Ragnarok they've day absolutely one, won. that's absolutely smashed it. And I guess it would kind of make sense that would be about three years ish, maybe. Uh, yeah, but well, to be fair, years. was it five years for God of War 2018? Yeah, but that that, that was a long time. They had to reboot it. That's what I mean. Like yeah. that's it was five years for that, and that was with loads of stuff. Thank so God. three. Speaking of Microsoft and Sony there could be a potential partnership on the horizon. We heard last week yep. from Colin Moriarty, who said that uh, at one point, the Halo Master Chief Collection was um, in talks to come to PlayStation 4. Mm. And in an interview with Kotaku at E3 last week, uh, Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, has sort of elaborated on his plans to open up the brand because mm. there was a kind of a lot of criticism coming out of their conference that the Xbox machine has kind of been, been pushed to like the sidelines. Obviously, yes. they're releasing the uh, Project Scarlet next mm. year. But they're bringing their services and their games to uh, a variety of different like different consoles. They mm -hmm. are part partnering with Nintendo. Yep. They have a lot of um, obviously Windows compatibility, mm -hmm. and so people are wondering, could they come to PlayStation Four? I hope, kind of, that they to, uh, mm, mm, good. Yes but also worrisome because right. I, mean, I feel like if, if Sony are on the end of this being like, okay, well, we're going to keep all our exclusives, do all of our stuff, and yes. then take in the Xbox goodies as well, Xbox are going to completely just fall off the edge, aren't they, is, yeah. is the thing. So if there's a nice cohesion between the two, that'd be fantastic. But yeah, I read the, the thing and the way he talks about how he wants the future of gaming to be and this whole cohesiveness between all these gaming giants in the industry is such a wonderful future that I would like to see. It's like, so cool because I, mean, I, I, I like exclusives in theory. I like that you have mm. to go to sort of certain platforms to get certain experiences, but I yeah. don't like it when sort of games that were third party then become yeah. exclusive because that just seems like ah, it's frustrating yeah. that that competition has to exist and I like that's more open. He did say an interesting thing about like, because people are saying, well, if you don't have an Xbox mm. or if you don't have, if you're not focusing fully on the console, then yeah. how are you making money? And he said a really interesting thing. He said, like the business is selling software and services. The mm. business is not how many consoles you sell. Mm. The consoles are not where the profit is in this side of the business, which is where the whole who's selling more consoles at any one time is the kind of like root good of uh, who is doing well in the business is mm. not true, yeah. which is interesting because that's what we always focus on, I think. Yeah, we yeah. focus on how the PlayStation 4 sold double the Xbox One and we're using that as a barometer of success. Mm. But apparently like it's more in the software and like the mm. games, which yeah. would make sense for Xbox to try to get yeah. their exclusives everywhere and then mm. reap in the benefits in a uh, way. Exactly. No, yes, if, I guess they've been on the back foot this generation, so this is their way of actually stepping into the forefront and going, okay, let's have a little bit, little bit of this, a little bit of this, give back as much as we can. I think that's a fantastic way of them actually pulling themselves back into relevance a bit because as much as I love Xbox, they have kind of... And you, you know what? I, mean, I didn't make to say words then. They've, just... they've, they've, they've done this. And you know what, right? I love Halo, but I don't like, controversial, the Xbox controller. So let me play Halo on my nice little DualShock 4 with a nice little touchpad and a light and have a nice time. Is that too much to ask? Ash, what's our final news story? Well, speaking 
of Halo. Another great segue. Which will be on the next gen. Whoa. We've got some more uh, next gen stuff here, which... Let me get my... Ooh, wow, Jesus cut, Christ, that was dangerous. So this was in the uh, a piece from the Ubisoft man, Elaine Corrie. Got it right, Elaine, finally. Alan. Um, but yeah, so he was talking about things that are going to happen in the next gen and how he feels about that and what sort of things are coming. And it was basically loads more stuff about how it's going to be more powerful, it's going to be fantastic, all, this, uh, all of these vague things about the future that are just going to be really, really good. And that's I promise. A, yeah, that's about it. And one of his uh, his little notes on that was there was new ways for fans to exchange data, <laughs> but like no no expansion on this, just data. Ash, I can't wait till the next gen comes so I can exchange data with you. Wow, that sounds so fun. What a good future. I love exchanging data. I Let's love exchange it. some data. <laughs> I love it when executives who are like working on the consoles <laughs> try to spruce it up and like sort of make it marketable yeah. like they just kind of don't know how they're like wow the teraflops honestly guys <laughs> the teraflops are so good the data really you good. can exchange really good. so much data oh. are you excited about next gen because what i what we've seen so far from uh, microsoft's you know mm. unveiling at e3 it all sounds good but there hasn't been that kind of like unique selling point to me yet. Mm. They, uh, both Sony and Microsoft keep talking up the SSD and how it's going to make um, sort of load times faster yes. and it's going to increase the ability for the games themselves to read yes. the data from the disc and then present it. But sorry, but then like, okay, yeah, like, that's yeah. Cool. It's all good and stuff, but like, it's not tangible at the moment, I think, as a, as a gamer. I, I guess people who are interested in PC gaming and like the console gaming, the difference between the two, it's kind of catching up still. So it's all of the different spec stuff I feel is good and interesting, but I want a bit more that's like, okay, well, this is the experience I'm going to get on yeah. the next gen. And there's been like, this description of it being like the leap from 2D to 3D, mm -hmm. which if you're thinking wow. about gaming, massive. Mm -hmm. Thinking about film, I didn't even think <laughs> about that. Yeah, there's the, the other side to this. We're swapping mediums for a split second. <laughs> yeah, but like, if the, I just mean that they were like, the, the 3D film is the future. 3D is all this yeah. other. What if this next gen happens to be their 3D film? What that. happens? What happens? We're all wearing the blue green glasses, going, "Wow, this is the future," and it's just the same, but with just like when they try to make 3D TVs <sighs> happen. Exactly. It's, so fr it's kind of it's not well, it's not frustrating, but it, it it makes Microsoft and Phil Spencer's comments about how yeah. they don't really need the Xbox kind of perhaps more silly because yeah. they have announced their Scarlet, mm. but the, much of their focus has been on like services like Games Pass or mm. Project X Cloud, and it feels like that's where the real differentiators are going to be, yeah. not necessarily in the hardware or like how that's going to impact games, mm. but how these proprietary services from both Microsoft, Sony, and even Nintendo are going mm. to impact what kind of experience you get in the next gen, which is interesting and again makes the console war kind of... Mm more salient perhaps because all the machines are kind of going to be the same and then we're going to have these distinct services that you jump between brands for but i don't know but josh come on what about the data exchange the data exchange what about the data exchange what data Ash. there's all this data we're going to get to Should exchange we finish up this news and then go exchange some data yes please but i have one more quote because it really made me laugh was from matt booty about the next gen these are the things that they are proposing that will make these machines super sexy for fans to look forward to I wonder what you guys think down in the comments. Do you think this is going to be super sexy? And are you looking forward to it? But even if you are, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more list news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. She's been Ash. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Let's go and exchange some data. Come on. Come on. Then. Yeah. I'll make a cup of tea as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.